the NEP, so the, the undertone of the neoliberal neo uh, ideologies, uh, it stated that, you know, there will likely be a dilution of community participation because uh, everyone will be more focused on their own individual things and uh, uh, community participation and engagement will be limited. What do you have to say on this? Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for having invited me to be part of this uh, panel discussion in the esteemed presence of my teachers and my friends. Uh, looking at the new education policy as per the theme that has been laid out, a neoliberal onslaught on fundamental rights of education in India. As uh, Professor Srikan has rightly pointed out that when it comes to neoliberalism, yes, it is a fact that it is a, an economic and political paradigm that emphasizes limited government intervention in the market, deregulization, privatization and free market capitalism. And as he had pointed out, it emerged, uh, it emerged as a response to the perceived failures of welfare state policies in the 1970s and became influential through figures like Margaret Thatcher in the UK and Ronald Reagan in the United States of America. And coming to the Indian context, the introduction of uh, new liberal policies in the 1990s under the banner of economic liberalization or LPG as Sir had mentioned, has led to significant changes in the economy and society, positively and negatively. In many cases, the negative impacts outweighs the positive ones due to the fact that vast majority of Indians are poor, and that is still the reality. And the National Education Policy 2020, introduced by the Indian government has been hailed by many as forward-thinking blueprint of, uh, for the country's educational landscape. However, a closer look at its previous uh, at its uh, provisions reveals a tilt towards neoliberal policies that could infringe on the fundamental rights to education. Uh, and therefore, going by the new educational policy. Uh, we can briefly analyze the aspect of new education policy 2020 that we constitute as uh, neoliberal and how they might impact the foundational principles of education in India. Some of which had been already mentioned by uh, the panelists here. And the most important one is the commercialization or commodification of education. And apart from that, is the diminishing state responsibility, which I feel have some connectivity with, what, uh, with, the, with the question which you have asked. Uh, why? Uh, when you look at, uh, when you look at, you go through the, the new education policy, you'll find that uh, it tries to diminish the responsibility of the state, whether at the center or at the state, where according to me, I believe that right from its inception, when you look at India, when we frame the Indian constitution, what we have is when it comes to the Indian economy, it is a mixed economy because based on the ground reality of our country, that is the best because I feel that the state also have a very important role. But through the new education policy, what you will find out is that the state is trying to washed away everything and leave it for the private individuals to meddle with education in the country, which I feel it is very unfortunate. Because, for example, if you look at uh, the uh, central university like uh, Nehu, me personally, if not because of central university, I wouldn't have dreamt of continuing my studies, my PGs. I would have end up only completing my UG. That is a reality when we, when we talk about India, where the majority of the people are still or do belong to the poor class. So therefore, what I believe is this new education policy, it is not pro-people because majority of the people are not the rich, but majority are poor. <laughs>